fish. Heavy fish. It's close to he was jumping. Got him on a Rapala. So there's the lure, nothing special, just your standard small silver and black, you know, shad pattern Rapala. A floater, not a sinker. And uh, I was trolling right at 2.4 miles an hour with that Rapala about four to five feet deep max. Think lead core line's obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. It's time to talk about one of our favorite lures, minnow plugs. Um, as everybody out there knows that trout fishes or, you know, trolls for landlocked kings, minnow plugs are a great lure for hooking a bunch of fish and they're also great lures for hooking trophy sized fish. What do big fish eat? They eat smaller fish and that minnow plug, well, it looks like a minnow. Um, part of the, the, the reason that they're so effective is that slim profile and they put off a good hard wobble. They make a lot of vibration and it looks like something a predator can swallow pretty easily. Um, a lot of times, you know, your, your, your broader lures, well, they'll discourage strikes simply because kind of on an instinctive level, predatory fish know if they eat something that's too large, it can get stuck in their throat, stuck in their gills, and it could ultimately kill them. But when they see something slim and thin like that, they know they can grab it by the tail and they can easily, you know, turn it around head first and swallow it. So that's that's part of the appeal of a minnow plug. It looks like what the fish eat. It looks slim. It looks easy to swallow. Puts out a lot of vibration. It looks like an injured bait fish. And, and you know that injured gazelle out there in Africa, well, that's the animal the lions target. Same thing with the minnow plug. It looks injured. It looks like it's struggling. And it really turns on those big predators. Now, growing up, I was a huge fan of the standard floating Rapala, and I always kind of scratched my head a little bit about the jointed versions, like this, uh, this is just a beautiful plug, this jointed J9 Rapala in a rainbow pattern. This one sinks, this is a standard floater. But the thing that kind of, kind of baffled me is why would you use a jointed lure? I remember my Uncle Bob. We used to go down to San Francisco Bay and do a lot of plugging for stripers. And my dad, he was a he was a straight minnow plug guy. But my uncle Bob, he loved those jointed versions. Well, now you know, 40 years later, I've got a lot of days on the water under my belt, and these are my observations. Your mileage may vary, but this is kind of my recommendations on when you choose the standard straight version and when you choose the jointed version. So. First things first, when a lot of guys think about fishing minnow plugs, they think about fishing fast. And if you're gonna fish fast, you're gonna troll three to four, maybe five miles an hour, you want the straight version. In my mind, this is a version that you can troll faster. It has a more subtle action, so it has more action at higher speeds. So if I'm gonna power troll, I'm gonna troll fast, I'm probably gonna reach for the standard Rapala. Now, the jointed version, or as, as a, a lot of us like to call it, the broken back version, um, this lure has more action. It's not rigid. It has a joint in the center. So it has more action at lower speeds. If you think you need to go slower, this is a great choice if you're trolling. 
if I am casting, if I'm fan casting from the shore of a lake or from a boat, maybe I'm casting at, you know, a point or a creek coming into the lake, something like that, I really like the jointed version. You can't cast it quite as far. It's not quite as aerodynamic. It kind of flops around in the air. But uh, that disadvantage is, is, you know, kind of overpowered by the extra action the lure gives you. And the same goes in creeks and rivers. Um, I could fish it slower with more action. It also lends itself well. A lot of times when I'm fishing a river, I don't want to be retrieving the lure. I want to cast it across, maybe retrieve it a little bit, but I want to let it swing in the current without retrieving line, but I still want that good swimming action, and that jointed version will give you that. So kind of in closing, um, I choose my minnow plugs based on the speed that I anticipate retrieving them. If I'm going slow, I'm going jointed. If I'm going fast, I'm going with the standard, solid, you know, stiff version, the floater, or, or the countdown model, but I'm going for the version without the joint in it. So just my notes on the broken back or jointed version, minnow plugs, and your standard minnow plugs. Your mileage may vary, but one thing I can tell you for sure, you need a good supply of minnow plugs in your box. They are trophy producers, and uh, sometimes they'll produce fish when nothing else will. Anyway, this is Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. Go get yourself some Rapalas. I'll catch you later, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please hit it now, and uh, thanks for all the support, folks. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. FishHuntShoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at FishHuntShoot.com.